Hello and welcome to Mike's Garage. Um, before we get started, if you're enjoying our videos, by all means, please subscribe. And when you subscribe, be sure and please click on the notification bell so you'll be notified every time we put out a new video. Okay, everything is beautiful today. Everything is just clicking along nicely. Uh, I want to mention, in the last video, I mentioned that we will be building, I will be building a bike from the ground up. And I told some details about it, such as it would happen as I could afford to do it. That's all that meant. Okay, that's, to me, that's just keeping it real, saying, this is what it's going to take me to do this. Come along with me and I hope you enjoy it with me. That's all I really meant. I was not asking anyone to help me finance my project. Okay, I'm done with that. I just needed to clear that up. Okay, next thing is my road bike, which I put together a while back and I rode to Born Free and she's been real good, but there's something about her that was not as smooth as I thought it should be. It's been my motorcycle for a lot of years, so if it's not quite the way I wanted it, then I wanna know why. And so I'm back into the motor, I pulled the heads, I'll probably pull the cylinders. I may do a little bit of, of work there, but basically I pulled the heads off and I'm changing my valve spring pressures and spacing and things like that. And it's not necessary to go into all that detail, but basically I'm reassembling it right now. I've cleaned it all up. And as long as the valves are out and they've only been in there a short time, I just want to show how to clean up the valves. By clean up, I mean lapping them into their seats. So here is an intake valve. And I really like this stuff when I get it all cleaned up. It's such a pleasure to work with. Okay, what I'm going to do is I just lube the stem with some marble mystery oil. And that'll make the valve spin freely in the guide. Now... The guide's already been cleaned. I have brushes, I have hones, but all this stuff was still pretty fresh. So basically I cleaned it, washed it, the way I usually do alcohol in an air hose. And if I wanted to do it, which I did when I rebuilt them, I would hone those valve guides. This is a little tiny ball hone. Those are little bitty ceramic balls on that brush. And I don't know if you can see them or not. In fact, this one looks like it's about worn out. But that's the way you hone a valve guide. You put it in your drill, you try to give it a nice even speed and give a nice, what you're doing is you're scoring a pattern on the inside of that valve guide for oil to run down. So it's a nice thing to do. All right, we got that done. We talked about it. I think we're ready to lap this valve. So, I think what I want to do is, again, this valve um, hasn't been run that long. And you can see I scrubbed everything up again, but here is my valve grinding tool, valve lapping tool. And now I've already oiled that stem. Look carefully, see if there's any dog hair on it. Okay, now we're going to put some lapping compound on it, and it's a fine lapping compound because, again, the valve's in pretty good shape. So we're going to put some compound on it, about every 90 degrees on there. And we've got the tool on here. I think I'm going to wipe my finger off with all that lapping compound on it. And we'll run it down the guide, nice and careful. Don't want to scratch the guide. And the tool popped off. They usually do. It's just a suction cup. And the cool thing to do is spit on it. So I did. All right, now, we just go 90 degrees at a time. And when you tap that valve head into the seat, that spreads the compound out again. So there you are. 
And you go around it. And you can hear as the compound gets less gritty as it smooths out. Just hear it going sss. But when we start, then it works its way down to being real smooth. Now, you know, for a long time I did a lot of these for evolution motors. And the reason it was so much on the evolution motors, because in the early history of the evolution motor, they blew base gaskets like crazy. And the base gaskets would start leaking oil, and pretty soon, in fact, it happened real early in their life, I'm going to do this just a little bit more, and then we'll show what the progress is like. But anyway, as the evolution motor came into being in a big way, we pulled a lot of top ends and replaced a lot of cylinder-based gaskets. Well, that's all well and good, but it happened a lot at about 40,000 miles. Now, I don't know if that's normal or not, but it sure seemed real common. So at 40,000 miles, my old buddy I used to work with, he or I would pull the top end and replace the base gaskets. But gee, it's got 40,000 miles on it. So at 40,000 miles, how would it be if we put a fresh set of rings in it as long as we're there? So we'd ball hone them, put a fresh set of rings in them, and then we'd clean up the cylinder heads and lap the valves. Under normal usage, those motors easily went another 100,000 miles from that point on because we just freshened them up and fixed those base gasket leaks. That's one of the things that make, makes Evo engines so popular. They really do last a lot of miles with, with, with proper care. Okay, I'm about done lapping this valve. It's starting to bore me, I don't know about you. But we're gonna, I think I wanna clean one of those. Now we want a, a seat that's about 60 thousandths wide. And if you look there, there it is. You see the dark stripe. Yeah, we got a little bit of pitting, but it's real slight. You know, I'm going to take it down a little more. I have to. I'm sorry. It's bothering me. I want it just a little better. I want to get ahead of myself. I wanted to show installing the valve. And, uh, Can't do it till I'm happy with the way it's seating. You know, another thing people don't realize is in the old days, valve jobs did not last anywhere near as long as they do today. And it was every home mechanic used to lap the valves in his own car. It was just standard procedure. They had little hand crank lapping tools that are just beautiful. Uh, my dad had one. I think cameraman Mike's dad had one. I think, I think every one of those old geezers had them. Now that I'm an old geezer, how come I don't have one? <laughs> Okay. And what it was, it was a little mechanism with a hand crank, and you would crank it, and it would oscillate the valve. It would move back and forth, and then it would rotate over and move back and forth again on the next 90 degrees. They came in a, a wooden presentation case. They were just gorgeous. Okay, that's not the one I wanted. Now we're going to see what this seat looks, what this valve looks like. That's pretty good. Now, I'll have to say, it's getting a little wider than I would like. The seat, just a little bit wider than I would like. But boy, is it nice. 
So we're going to set it down right here for a moment and get all this valve grinding compound out of here. Get it off the seat. Take a good look at that seat. It looked pretty good when I got started. Let me get my flashlight. Yup. Yup. Oh, it's lovely. Lovely? Really? I like it. Okay. So that's it. We've got all that compound out of there. We've got that valve all cleaned up. You know, I think what we'll do is go ahead and assemble just one valve into the head just to demonstrate how it's done. I'm sure most people know how it's done, but there's a few that don't, and I don't know, maybe they'll enjoy this. So let me get this thing out of the vise. Ah. And onto the bench. Now I might add that this, uh, this tool here that I have screwed into the cylinder head is one my old, my old buddy made for me. Actually, I think he made it for himself and left it to me, but uh, Fred Sr. made that. It's made out of a piece of all thread and a hunk of a spark plug. And it's welded together and it's I know they make them, you can buy them, but this one seems to work just fine. Okay. I think we'll get that thing out of the way. <laughs> no, we won't. Let me take it out with the vise. There. Okay. Now, as I mentioned, all of this, these, these clearances, and all this stuff has to be set properly. And uh, all these measurements correct. This is a shim that goes under the, uh, under the retainer, this side up. Oh, heck, I had one right there already. They're already measured. I know exactly which ones I want. Basically, they're 30 thousandths. And uh, that's the side up. Okay. Now, all this stuff I have already cleaned, but we're going to. Put it together now. Okay, now that's the lower retainer. First the shim, then the lower retainer. Okay, then we have the springs right here, and the top collar. Titanium. This is the this is some really nice stuff. Um, I think this came from my old buddy Dave. Okay. That would be Dave Mackey. Okay. So we've got all the parts we need. So we're going to put the valve in there. If I put a rag here, it'll hold everything in place. Okay. All that does, all I'm using that rag for is to hold that valve up so I can install the new seal. And I think this is the proper sleeve to go over the valve stem. Okay, then we need the proper valve seal. 
you thought my teeth were false, probably. Okay. And here is the new valve seal, which will slide right over that stem very carefully. But that's what the plastic was on there for. Make sure the valve is up there. Slide the seal down the valve. And then pull that sleeve off of there. Okay. Again, we're going to get that that rag stuffed up in there, and that'll hold the valve up, you see. So now, we're going to grab an implement of destruction here. Looks like I'm falling off my chair. That can't be too impressive. Okay, now. And it bottomed. And there it is. Okay. Thank you for the close up. I think I think that uh, that was a seal installer. We had the sleeve over the stem so that the seal would slide on. And here are the springs. And the next thing will be the top collar again. I think this is a beautiful titanium collar. There's a number of companies make these things. I don't even know if these are still available. These are cranes. But uh, anyway, nice lightweight valve train with lots of travel for a great big cam. Works real well. <laughs> All right, now, um, what do I need? I need my keepers. Yes, I need a keeper, that's it. All right, get that one in there. Okay, get some crease in here. Making sure you have the right size keepers for the valve stems you're using. And now all we're going to need is a nice, great, big uh, tool here to do this. And I think we can show it. So let me get some grease on the end of this tool. You know, the tool with the dog hair on it? That one. Okay. Yeah, we could do this on the bench, but I think it's going to be a little easier to see right here. That's funny. There we go. Nope, I'm wrong. Onto the bench we go. Where'd I put that tool? There it is. Just have to hold the valve in place as I do this. And I'll try to put that valve back in the same spot as I had it before. Um, hmm. You know, I used to just set them on the bench and do them, and now 
It just doesn't want to work for me. Maybe I was 10 years younger. Now what you want to do is be sure that you're being real careful to guide that spring retainer, which I'm doing from the wrong side. Mike can't even get a camera in here. Be sure you guide this retainer so it doesn't get caught up with the groove in the valve stem. And there you go. Maybe I could turn it like this and you can see it a little better, huh? that help? Okay, now we want to get the whole groove showing up for that, uh, for the retainer going on there, for the keeper. Okay. So now we're going to get one keeper in from the inside. And one keeper on from the outside. Had to drop one. Wouldn't be complete without dropping at least one. Okay, get them both on there. Be very careful with them. And then slowly, slowly let that valve spring compressor. There we go. Getting it from both ends. I'm not really all thumbs. I just really wanted to be sure everybody could see it. There it is. Let me turn it now so everyone can see it. There. And everything is seated perfectly. And the intake valve is now uh, where it belongs. So now all we need to do is the exhaust valve. And since you've already seen the intake, I don't think we need to do the exhaust. So since I was speaking earlier that the next project coming up is going to be another bike, and I really don't want to tell what it is. I'd really present it one piece at a time like the Johnny Cash song. I think this is going to be fun. Anyway, I hope it is. It's going to be fun for me. I have a friend front end here which has an entire story connected to it, just about like everything else. But I've been wanting to put this front end on a bike for many, many years. And it's been laying around collecting dust for many, many years. This is a, uh, this is a uh, Harley Davidson VL Springer. They made VLs from 1930 to 1936. They were flathead 74 cubic inch and 80 cubic inch motors that had a splash oil system there before Harley came up with their oil pumps for circulation in their motors. It's the forerunner of the UL Harley Davidson, which is a flathead 80 from 1937 and 1948. Those came in 74 and 80 inch version. But the VLs are known for their I-beam configuration. Notice that this back leg is a shape of an I-beam and it's all one piece, all the way up to the top. This is probably one of the strongest front ends in history. Back in the day, one of my buddies hit a car doing 40 miles an hour with one of those front ends. <laughs> and he rode it home and we checked there and nothing was bent except the car. The car was very badly bent. But uh, 
That's a VL Springer, and I just love the looks of this leg. And I've got the proper tree for it and everything. Before we use it, it will have to go in and be straightened. I may have this stem changed for a more conventional one for a later frame, because I want to use a later frame than this. But that's another story for another time. So anyway, this is the front end. This is the first part of the new project. And hope to see you soon. Until then, see you out on the road.